this was in the 70s, so um, showing off the year in 76, there was some crossover because by that point, the entire writing staff of the Lush Company was on the West Coast, except for one person, uh, two people, because Tom Whedon and John Bonney and I uh, had come to the West Coast to you know, seek our, our fortunes, our futures. Um, and we would mail the scripts back, back east. Um, Tom Wheaton was out here uh, doing the same thing. Um, I had met Chris Cerf, had a, uh, Christopher Cerf, son of Bennett Cerf, and people said, well, who's Bennett Cerf? Well, he found a Random House. What's Random House? It's where they make books. What are books? It's these things that you used to read before you got your little iPad thing here. Oh, thank you. Um, but, and Chris had been, you know, he, he was a very childlike, not childish, but I mean, he had a very impish childlike sense of humor and laugh and, and, um, so we're at a party at Joe Raposo's house the night that Joe is going to introduce to us the songs for Oh Blow Is His Back. This is, so, Joe Raposo's ego was almost as big as Donald Trump's. I mean, they, were, they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a cage match about egos. Um, and therefore, he was both loved and hated by people who loved and loved and hated him. Tom Wynn had gone to Harvard with him, so he, you know, he'd known him back when ego was just being developed. So at some point, Joe took a break, and, and there's, a, there's a set of drums there, there's a piano, and for whatever reason, Joe didn't come back. So one of our writers, Jim Thurman, gets beyond takes the drumsticks and starts playing drums, and Chris starts uh, playing old rock and roll. And you, Chris, you know, when the night has come, and the night is when, so I start singing. Well, Joe came back, and he'd lost his party. He, so he went to bed angrily. <laughs> Just the hell with you people. We wouldn't give his party back. Because we were, I mean, because, you know, we were, we were brought there, you know, to bow and scrape at the, you know, the, the feet of the mighty Raposo, the mighty Portuguese. But that's when I met Chris Surf, and that's when this marriage and this great friendship was forged. So the Sesame Street things, I mean, Chris had written songs for Sesame Street, recorded them, because Chris writes music and sang with them, and Muppets would. So now we have a chance to do the same thing. And so. We did a parody of a song called The Ten Commandments of Love. You don't know what it is. It's a song, you know, not, not downloaded. You, know, you buy a record. Um, um, <laughs> so we did this parody. I wrote the lyrics and I sang lead. And we recorded, and I took the red eye in. Uh, we had a recording date at 9 o'clock. So I've had no sleep. But for whatever reason, when you don't sleep, there's something, I mean, I don't understand what, what this is, but I've noticed this. Without sleep, there's some more resonance in your voice. So it was my first time in a recording studio, we did it like on the second tape, take rather, and it became a very, very big hit for a long time. Made no money, but the fact that it was perceived as one of the great classic songs.